Okay, uh, in this week's video, I'm going to cover how to avoid, you know, audience, what is called cannibalization or overlap on your Facebook audiences that you're targeting on a Facebook ads campaign. And so basically, uh, for those not already in the know here, uh, you know, on Facebook, you, there's multiple different ways, obviously, you can target your customer or potential client on Facebook. Um, and you could create um, um, well, there's a whole diff number of different targeting options, some of which definitely do overlap one another. And the key to being able to actually get you know where your results are today or where they sh end up at should be totally two different things um, to the point where you know you should have t you know from day one to the time your campaign's optimized will be 10x different. It's a, lot, a big reason why a lot of people you know, say uh, Facebook ads don't work because they don't know how to optimize their ads, they don't know how to track their ads, they don't know how to optimize them. So, um, and you know, a lot of it on Facebook just comes down to what is the audience that you should be targeting, especially starting out when you don't have lookalikes audiences to, to rely on so much, or to wait for the machine learning algorithm to figure out who your customer should be just based upon their billions of data points, just figure it out for themselves, which they will do, but for people that don't have a big bank roll, they'll go broke before they do that. So usually starting out, what you have to do is you, you find an audience that's gonna work for your product, and, and or a demographic set that's gonna work for your product or company, and then you target that and target that alone. Within that, you should definitely segregate the, the ad groups, or should I say campaigns, so that you're targeting different audiences as the very first thing you test. Once you have an ad that gets a, in a proper click-through rate, let's say, uh, where your cost per click is around a dollar or less if you can, depending you know, the audiences, they, they, the, the CPM or cost per click is gonna end up a little bit differently. You know, if you're targeting business owners versus you know, 65 plus has a little bit less, a lot less uh, saturation and competitiveness for that, for those uh, audiences. But within that, you should be basically testing that audience starting out, which one's going to work. And you, a lot of times, especially if you don't have a lot of experience running ads, you're just going to have to test a bunch of different ones, ones that sound right. But uh, given that there are overlap between them, how do you effic efficiently test these different audiences and come to a conclusion on which one works, especially when you're going to run multiple campaigns testing multiple audiences that may overlap at the same time, which is what this video is about. So, um, as far as you know, the reasons why this matters. At the end of the day, let's say you, if you do set up a Facebook campaign, you target ten different audiences. I just say. You know, looking back at our prior results here, doing this, you know, out of the hundreds of campaigns that we've set up, one or two is going to work really well, just to be fair uh, about it. And then, so you should expect that going in. And so, don't be, that's where the 10x results come in, part of it, uh, of course, um, not all. And so, you want to be able to drill that. And of course, if you don't, if you are overlapping audiences, that won't stop you from getting probably profitable results, but if you want the stellar results that goes beyond, which is where the people that really know what they're doing and make real, real money actually go beyond what this, the average person's gonna do, uh, you should go ahead and do the prevention of the can you know the overlapping of the audiences and, and what you know audiences that'll cannibalize each other and, and when you're running tests against different audiences at the same time. So how do you actually prevent different audiences that you're targeting on Facebook through your ads from overlapping each other. Well, it's actually a really easy hack. Unlike Google Ads, which you can do, you can separate things out pretty well there as well. Um, basically what you do is you set up a custom audience for each uh, set a group of, or audience, of, uh, a group of people that you want to target. You save it, and then in your Ad group settings, you will go ahead, you will, and so you'll do that for each of your 10 proposed uh, audiences that you want to target as a whole, or demographics, or, you know, just the audience in general that, you know, demographics be included in that. 
and you go into see your ad group settings and you target that one and you negative nine other the nine other audiences that you want to test and set up all at the same time there as you're creating your custom audiences and that each campaign will have one positive audience and nine negative audiences that you're targeting because you can always you can target a positive or a negative in your Facebook ads. You don't want to target these people, I want to target these people. I want to test 10 audiences. Well, you uh, digitally have 10 different campaigns. Every campaign targets just one audience and then the other nine. You, ex you explicitly tell Facebook that you do not want to target those and therefore, if there is overlap, it automatically gets weeded out. So it's pretty simple uh, you know, along those lines to get it set up right, you know, to do it right. Even a novice can do that now that you know the trick. So, but how do you know if you have overlap? Is there extra work? I mean, obviously you can just do it to be safe, but if you're curious how much overlap there was, let's say you have a campaign running already and you don't know potentially to get more results out of what you're doing, should I, because, and this is a big mistake that people make, they, you know, anytime you make a change in a Facebook campaign or a Google campaign or whatever, those two being the big one, the algorithm's going to get confused and you're going to have to go through a learning phase with your campaign all over again. So if your campaign's making good money right now, to go to change things for the potential of, th of things to get better, that's a big risk. Well, first of all, you're going to have some reduction in result, results short term, unavoidably. Beyond that, it probably is worth it, but if you get it wrong, you lose money. Um, and potentially, if, you, if there was no overlap, then you just really uh, kicked your own ass there, basically, because there was no point to have the, lear you know, the learning algorithm that Facebook has relearn how to run your ads, realize, and, and get no benefit at the end of the day. So your goal always is to figure out and plan very, very well, like they say in carpentry, you measure twice and you cut once. With PPC, you want to do all the possible research you can once, and make one change. And that's also a person that's really good at PPC will make very little changes. It'll all be very, very precise, measured changes that were done up for proper amount of research has been put in. But you could go over back to the uh, topic at hand. Uh, Facebook has its own clever little tool that can tell you it's called the audience overlap tool. It's actually literally uh, named that. Uh, but you could go and you could find out two audiences that you're proposing through your campaign set up are actually overlapping and then how much do they overlap and then determine, like I said, it gave you the scenario where if your campaigns are already running and making money, if you could get more out of doing this system and proposed to actually um, kind of take the part of the audience that you have now that is working out. And, it, and when it comes to PPC, if you're not getting the return you want yet, usually it all just comes down to being able to slice and dice the, what you have going, to measure each individual part and then weed out the parts that aren't working or downgrade them bidwise and then upgrade the ones that are working above average to a tour they're running more aggressively. And so you take the budget out of the parts of the campaign that aren't working as well, put it towards the part that are, and eventually you obviously are going to be able to scale the campaign that well, uh, that way as well. Uh, when it or just get it to where it is productive and then add a new campaign and then you go through the same process. You you you, you slice and dice that campaign so you can figure out what parts should be weighted out and then with proper tracking like it, you know you eventually get the return you want out of every campaign you want just a matter of when. So with that all with all that said, there how big of an audience uh, as a side topic, how big of an audience should you actually have when you're doing Facebook ad targeting to get the maximum results? I always shoot for an audience, maximum audience size of 10K people. A lot of people will have an audience I will see when I go in person and look at their audit their campaigns. There's an audience of 50,000 potential uh, prospects or 100,000 in that campaign. It may be working, but it would work better if you were to, going back to what I said before about slicing and dicing, to get things down to figure out sub audiences that can be set up there or at least break things down into different ad groups that target different age demographics or gender demographics or combination of their thereof which is very easy to do in Facebook which a lot of the pros are going to automatically do get it down to a smaller audience size and then from there just go back to what I would say before shut off or 
uh, do manual bidding, so you can have less bidding on those ones that aren't working at, as good as average according to your tracking, and then ones that are, run those a little bit more aggressively. But that's what I would recommend. There's a point where your audience is too small, where you're, it, it, the still run on ideally, how, as I have found, just due to the group Facebook system, I should say. And that's kind of the sweet spot from what I have found. Not to say it has to be 10K exactly, but you know, of course, I would never do an audience, you know, a thousand or a hundred thousand. So you, I think you get my point. And so if you right now have a campaign that's working again, it's over 10,000, especially if it's in the 50 to 100,000 range, or, or you know, God help you if it's more than 100,000. Break, you know, consider really consider breaking it up further to silo each and going back to full circle of where we were before. Find out the sub audiences, run different ad groups, do the negative what I call reciprocal targeting, where you're going to target the all the sub audiences, but only one at a time, and then negative the other remaining audiences, so you can single out individual sub audiences within the main audience that you were targeting before. And then with that, in that, you can decide uh, there's probably a couple out of the ten that you're going to just you know throw out. That will give you some budget to try something new, which then you can go through the process again all over again with that new campaign as I described before. So you'll certainly get more better performance doing that. The question is how much you're going to, and you're basically you're going to get because if you're not doing that now, you think your results are good now, that would be even you know be potentially amazing afterwards. I just many many times I've been working on a campaign where the cost per lead on a campaign was thirty bucks. After went through that kind of process, it was three bucks. Well, that, and of course, a lot of work on the ad itself, but just a combination of the two, you literally can get that kind of a, a reduction in a cost per lead. You can get the I've seen campaigns where your ROI might be two to one, and you can get it up to eight to one uh, if you're tracking revenue. Just to give you an idea of how powerful this stuff is, just the combination of doing what I described here uh, through the uh, reciprocal targeting and just being able to split test ads that are radically different from each other to find the, you know, the, the ad image itself and the, the headline combination, that kind of just works. So, and uh, like I said, with the ad, if you're not getting a cost per click that's under a buck, then you should basically, with a lot of those lines, go ahead and wrap, just try crazy stuff. The crazy stuff is going to be the stuff where you're going to scroll as a user and, and stop. Um, there, you know, the, the, the book, uh, The Purple Cow, is a, is a good analogy for that. Uh, people don't pay attention to, you know, there's too much stimuli out there, especially on Facebook where you're on there. So what you are going to pay attention to is the stuff that really stands out. So you should, that should be your goal. To make something that may not be look kosher to what professional or whatever in your industry, but that stuff doesn't get the great results. What do you want? You want to look professional or you want results? You're going to have to come to terms with that. Usually, most of the time, because when everybody else is professional and you're actually funny or engaging or wild or whatever, you know, that's how you get the results. Anyway, hope you like my video here and hope you actually try the, the, the system I gave you here with the reciprocal targeting. I have a lot of other videos like this where I go into depth on individual strategies that you can use on Facebook, Google, and other PPC as a PPC specialist using my 15 years of experience. And uh, if you like my video, I'll have another one every week that goes over another PPC-related topic uh, alone by itself. And I hope you um, will watch this as well. And uh, feel free, and uh, I encourage you to subscribe as well if you like in-depth tutorials on how to do PPC that go way beyond what other people are willing to do with their PPC tutorials and don't really tell you how to make money with your app, which is the goal of this channel here.